Okay, I think that looks good. And I hope everyone can hear me. Okay, great. So let's uh, just start. Okay, today I'm representing the CentOS KMOD SIG. So my name is Peter. And I also put my affiliation there. So it's just there because everyone has this fancy company logo. I don't have a company. I'm working in academia. And to emphasize that because I'm working in the public service for the state of Bavaria, there's no commercial interest at all. Whatever I'm saying, no commercial interest, and it's my personal statement. Whatever I'm saying, my personal statement. <laughs> yeah. Probably not the first time you have heard that. Okay. Uh, first, a few uh, overview. The beginning, so the KMOT SIG was established in June 2021, so it's not that old yet. Here are two important links. So the first one, if you're interested in what we are doing, the documentation link is where you should go. If you want to see more technical details, you go on GitLab. So everything we are using nowadays is there. It's one single source. All is in that group. Okay, so what was the KMOT SIG about? Well, what is it about? We want to provide kernel modules that are not included in central stream. And then, of course, not in Red Hat, not in Alma, not in Rocky. Okay, these are, here are some lists. So we have some kernel modules which are restricted in support because Red Hat at some point decides, okay, some of that devices, we do not support them anymore. So they have these fancies if they have real differences and they just mark some PCI IDs as not, as not supported anymore. Okay, we remove these if devs. That's it. <laughs> okay, then we have entry kernel modules that are simply not enabled because no one wants to support them. So we just say, okay, we might support them as a community, so we add them back again. We might also backport new entry kernel drivers, kernel modules. I think one example is the NTFS kernel module is now in, I think we provided only, now we provided for both 8 and 9. That's an example there, and also out of three kernel modules, but there we are limited to GPL only. And I think currently we have no example for that group because everything that was out of three is nowadays in G. Okay. And of course, some of these modules require user space tools, so we also provide these. There was a, some discussion if these should be in EPL or we provide them, should provide them. And the agreement at the end was more like it's better to have them with the KMOD SIG instead of in EPL, because in EPL, if you just apply it to Red Hat only or any other, it makes no sense. You cannot use them. Okay. Good. So what we have nowadays, so we have these KIBI tracking kernel modules that are ready to go. You can install them easily. And here I marked one thing which in my opinion is important, especially as we are mainly targeting stream. So because there are also other sources for some of these KMODs. Uh, but what's a difference is that we do actually allow you to install multiple versions of the same KMOD in parallel which is great if you're working on a stream machine like my laptop, because some stream kernels probably just don't work. So I want to switch my kernel, but want all my KMODs to still load. So that's what for me was important. Okay, then we have a second one, which is, yeah, it's not checked yet. We at some point want to sign these kernel modules, which is important for secure boot, but there we are waiting for, yeah. There's a link, you can look it up, it just takes time. <laughs> Someday, yeah. <laughs> okay. Then the accompanying user space tools, these are done as well. There's everything fine. Then driver disks, that was, um, I have no personal use there, but some people requested that. And thanks to the infra, we got that for free. So we actually did nothing there. I did nothing, just got, we get them for free. So great thanks there. And we, at some point, because at first we only wanted to support stream. At some point, we realized, okay, if we support stream, it's easy to support anything that's downstream of CentOS stream, like Red Hat, Alma, and Rocky. So we just added these as well. But there's also a small part that's missing. I think Neil asked about that a few days ago. So we don't have any easy way yet to install the CentOS release KMODs package on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. That's also, we are, yes, again, you can look it up why we just. It just takes time. Okay, but working on that. So you can that you can also easily install it on any other distribution. Okay. So that was the overview. Now it's getting a little more technical. To first motivate that. Okay, so the KIBI is something important. We already heard in the first talk today about that 
the ABI is stable for Red Hat, for REL, but not the KABI. The KABI, there are some symbols, and now we have a difference between eight and nine. In eight, some symbols were marked as stable for the major release. In nine, it has been changed. Now it's only stable for minor release. But important is to note that this has only been about a subset of the symbols anyway. So you really need to, to find a kernel module that only depended on these symbols. And to be honest, I never found one. None of the modules I use was able to be compiled only using symbols on the stable list. But still, that changes something. So I looked up some statistics because we have some fancy online plots where we see how often we have to rebuild our, K, uh, our kernel modules. So it seems like it changed still. It changed something for us. Because with the CentOS Stream 8, there's only a 55% chance that we need to rebuild a module. In 9, it's 92. So that's bad. Especially as with CentOS Stream 8, at least now, I think there's some changes in the background. Uh, the stream current releases are quite irregular. So I think there was one in the last four months. And with Stream 9, we get like one every week out to the mirrors. So that's a lot. So and if I have to do like, I have to rebuild every kernel module every week manually, I'm not going to do that. So that's obvious. I'm not going to do that. So the only way forward is we need to automatically do these rebuilds. Because usually most of the time, it just means I need to prep my sources again, change the kernel version, they, 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 I build against, redo everything, and that's it. So I don't need actually any manual steps most of the time. OK. Here, overview how we do that. Uh, so in the beginning, we worked with the OpenShift CI that's provided. But then uh, once we were allowed to move to GitLab, we did that. Because I want to have everything in public. I want that everyone can just look up what we do there and even see what is running. So you can go there. You can see exactly how we do that. There's all this. I have nothing on my laptop. It's all on GitLab. OK. And uh, well, I'm a software developer, so I'm used to GitLab. It's the other simple reason. I know that tool chain. It's easy for me to use it. So it was the most straightforward way to set it up. OK. Uh, here mentioned that we use actually different Git branches for each kernel version. That's important because if I want to update a K-mod built for a certain kernel, it's getting complicated if I already moved to a new one. So I really have one branch for each kernel version, and I can easily cha make changes there. Then the CI triggers again and builds it for the old one. So if, for example, if I find a bug in some kernel module, I can say, OK, I apply it, apply it to the last five kernels that have been released. And that's just cherry picking the same commit for all five branches. Five times push, the CI will take over. I'm done. That's nice. OK. And because that also happens from time to time. I think in stream eight, it happened twice last year. And it actually happened once this year in, in, in RHEL. Sometimes, because in, in, in this, to have these KIVI symbols that on the stable list stable, there's a lot of stuff going on in the source code. And sometimes it leads to that, the, the, that some symbols are claimed to be stable, but they're actually not, which is obviously a bug. But what should you do? Of course, you have then there's a new kernel. So it might be that we have to manually do rebuilds because our system will not see that because the symbol, is, the symbol claims to be stable, but it is not. So I have to do manual rebuilds. So I just add a new branch, push the branch, I'm done. OK. And apart from that, we are heavily relying on Git tags, but that's mostly to track the progress of the system because I often need to download like the kernel sources and other stuff, and I don't want to do that again, 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 again. So I do it once, and I just push a tag to mark like, OK, I have already looked at that kernel. I'm done. So the next time the CI is triggered, it just sees like, oh, yeah, I'm already done. I just skip it, So even if nothing changed. So it might be that in some Git repositories, you see one commit, and there are like 25 tags for that one commit. It usually makes no sense, but I'm using it to, progress, to track my progress there for the system to be more efficient. Because we don't want to, yeah, 
Okay. Uh, for all that to work, we have one central repository which is tracking the KABI info. So essentially, there are all these module.symverse.architecture. These files are in there for every kernel that has ever been released for stream 8 or stream 9. So that might even be interesting for some other people if you want to check out if your kernel module works for some specific kernel, you can check it against that repository to easily. Yeah, they're all in there. And of course, the creation of this repository is also automated. So I'm also not doing there anything anymore. I just wrote the script once to do it, and we are done. Okay. So that's the overview. Now with automation, there have to be some flowcharts. <laughs> so that's how it works, actually. So that's more the technical part now. So now you have a nice overview, now the technical part. So and here at the top, you see like that's how we build from this git. So we have two different kinds. We have some some package some packages we use this git and some we use source git. I think most people know the difference. Okay, so for the this git case, I have my start. I check if my sources, which are in the looker side cache, are actually on git centos.org. Because otherwise I cannot build. And if they're not there, what I do next is I check the Fedora looker side cache. No, why should I do that? That turned out to be quite useful for the user space tools. Because most user space tools are actually maintained in Fedora. And now maintainers can just cherry pick comments from Fedora to our, to the KMOD SIG. And the sources will be copied from Fedora, look aside cache to the CentOS one. So again, one step less that I have to manually do on my laptop, because most people don't have access to the CentOS look aside cache. Okay. Okay, then we look, have we already built it? If not, okay, we first do a scratch build to see is it actually working. If the scratch build succeeded, then we do the real build, we do the tag for the testing and then the tag for release. So and I only here have two steps only that might require manual steps. So either the sources are missing, then I really manually have to do the look aside, upload, and so on, or my scratch build is not, work, not working anymore, which means probably there have been some changes in the kernel which require source code changes in the module. It happens. Okay, so these are the only two cases. Otherwise, I don't have to do anything. Um, just a note, because we are also using this for the user space tools, which I think is quite nice that we can use the same. And what we are currently not using, but what might be useful for other six, is that at the end, and that's why, why I separated the tag build for testing and tag build for release, you can actually mark the last step, the tag for release, you can mark it in GitLab that it requires a manual interaction. So then you, you can do your testing, and once you're done, just open the GitLab, you go in the pipeline, you say like, yeah, I'm done, you click on OK, and then it's running the last step. Sure. Okay. So for source Git, it's even easier. So we first create an SRPM, really classical, try the scratch build. If it's not working, I have to fix it. If it's working, if it's a new version, if it's working and a new version, I push the new disk Git, and then it triggers this pipeline again, but of course without the scratch built in CBS, because that one we already did. So we don't want to stress CBS too much. So we try to be nice. <laughs> okay. That part? Okay. So, but now that's more imp the, the more interesting part, because now this was just how to build my kernel module, my package. But I also want to track when do I need to rebuild it. So that's a different pipeline. Here for the disk kit, so at the start, at the beginning, I check for which kernel the latest version has been built. I get the kernel version. Next step, I check are there any newer kernel versions available? If not, I'm done. So that script really, the pipeline, if it's a no, it takes five seconds, it's done. If there is a new kernel, now we have this loop, I check, are there any new symbols? Have any of the symbols I am dependent on changed? If no, I go back, is, are there even more new kernels? If not, we are done again. 
But if anything changed, I bump the spec file, I update it. That's essentially just, just it's one or two SED commands, that's it. And I push the new branch to disk it. And then the other pipeline triggers again. Okay. Now the most complicated. <laughs> and then I, I stop worrying you. So the source git one. Here at the beginning, we have the part where I actually check for new sources available. And there I actually had some discussion with some people from Red Hat that said like, that's not a good idea. Some other sets that might be a good idea. At the end, I decided to go or we decided to go that way. So what, what I mean with new sources available. So most of the kernel module sources are entry and are part of the CentOS stream kernel sources, but not officially maintained by anyone at Red Hat. So Red Hat, they are allowed to break these modules. They can do some backports, not caring about these modules. They, they might be broken. That's fine. But most of the time for the maintainers, it's actually easier to simply cherry pick one of the comments from the upstream kernel and apply the changes to the whole subsystem at least. So if there's a subsystem change in the kernel, also the modules that are not compiled for CentOS stream get these changes. So I want these changes as well. So that's why in this first step, I actually extract the source for the kernel module from the CentOS stream upstream, from the CentOS stream kernel. Turned out quite well. Most of the time it really works. So I extract these sources. If there are any changes, if they're not, I just keep the old ones. Okay. And then it's again actually, yeah, at the end it's a little different. So then uh, like with the disk, I get the current, current version. I check if there's a new kernel available. If yes, I check have the sources been changed. If the sources have been changed, I'm 100% certain I have to rebuild. Because if someone touched the sources, I should do a rebuild. Okay. If not, I change, I check the symbols. Have these changed? So it's just one logic more than before, but that's it. And at the end, of course, if the sources have changed, I have to do a git rebase. I rebase on the new sources. If they have not changed, I just do the bump spec. And the rebase might actually fail. And I think in the last two, last two months, the only manual step I had to do for all the kernel modules provided by the KMOD SIG has been due to that. So uh, I think, what was, was it? Uh, yeah, there was some new if dev rel difference was introduced and my patch did not apply anymore. So I was like changing two lines in my patch and that's it. So that was also easy. Okay. So apart from that one time, Everything we release, and usually that's once a week, like in total, I think it's by now eight and for nine is maybe 30 to 40 K mods. I only had to spend five minutes in the last two months to provide all these. So that's really nice. So it seems like the system is working. Okay. And apart from that, we're already done because I think we already laid a, a little bit anyway. So any questions, please? Let me check the on. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, are the kernel modules for proprietary devices considered in the scope of KMOD SIG? And if it is done so, how does the build system look like? Because it can't be done by a virtual machine, a genetic virtual machine of some kind. Sorry, I didn't get the first part. Um, are the kernel modules for property devices considered in the scope of KMOD SIG? Property devices, the uh, kernel modules for them? For prop? Well, take for instance, there are audio drivers, they have put into a certain card. So are these considered like that or is it not? Sorry, I, I just didn't get your question. Uh, there are property devices yeah. that uh, require a certain uh, level of kernel modules to be installed for them to work. So are these considered inside the scope of KMOD SIG? Uh, so yeah. Okay. Um, our limitation is GPL only. Oh, GPL only. GPL only. In tree, which means GPL only. Out of tree, also GPL only. So if you're thinking about NVIDIA, the old kernel is least, the old kernel module, no. 
we were told that if we want to provide these, we have to talk with Red Hat Legal. Right. And I tried to avoid that part. <laughs> <laughs> Fair so. enough. Um, no, uh, in order to build certain kernel modules, even when they're GPL only, um, they require the presence of those uh, modules to be there in that build environment. Yeah, but then someone needs to provide these and we can't. Exactly. Yeah, and we can't. And we are, they, these, these cannot be available in CBS. Mm -hmm. Because everything that's in CBS has to be built in CBS. Exactly. And yeah. you're not allowed to build there anything that is not GPL, at right. least for the kernel, or otherwise probably as well, or some other license allowed. So no, anything that depends in the kernel on a non-GPL kernel module or itself is a non-GPL kernel module is at least for what we do currently out of scope. And we just hope that most... Hardware, uh, they, they, they will realize that going GPL and going entry especially is helpful for everyone. And we actually thought about uh, uh, packaging the new NVIDIA GPU kernel module, which is GPL. Yeah. Um, we thought about that, but I tried it on, on one of the machines I have access to, mm -hmm. and I was not happy with it at, at all yet. So I'm waiting a little bit more for it to get stable because I don't think there's much use of it yet. Yeah, circling back to the test that you did on your machine. So it requires a certain kind of hardware for that to be tested, right? So how exactly do you automate all these things? If, uh, if, if you want to test environment? these tests, I cannot automate. Exactly. These, these I cannot. Um, no. That's... So it needs to be done voluntarily on so devices. The, the, that... Currently, the, the, what we do in our system, the tests are simply, does it compile? Uh. So anything else we have to plug in something else because of course all these calling kernel models probably depend on some right. hardware. Yeah. yeah. So testing is an issue. Yeah. yeah. Understood. Yeah. Thanks. Are there any more questions? Okay. Then we'll move right on to a, a, another. Oh, thank you for the presentation.